This episode of the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight contains strong language and sexual references. Viewer discretion is advised. Sunday you were my waitress, but I couldn't keep my eyes off you. Chances are. Howdy folks, I'm Dan Gross and welcome to the second episode of season five of the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight, Rochester's premier music and interview show. We're counting down to 50 regularly scheduled episodes this season. It's the biggest yet, the biggest names, more sponsors and partners, and of course, more support from the community as well. Of course, this is the second episode of the season and number 39 overall, that's, you know, we're doing the countdown thing. And uh, joining us today is the truly multi-talented Stephen Rossner. Let's give him a round of applause, shall we? And before we get going, let's hear from the people who make this possible. This episode was mixed by owner and operator of Wicked Squid Studios, Josh Pettinger. Please visit their website to find out how you can become a member of their studio today. This episode is brought to you by Bob Shop Records, Bernunzio Uptown Music, Row Photo, and Sound Source. Bernunzio Uptown Music, located in Rochester's East End, has been providing Rochester and the world with quality used string instruments since 1976. Bernunzio also offers concerts, workshops, and jam sessions. This season, we're in this warm, local, and creative space, Bob Shop Records. Located right outside the city at 1460 Monroe Avenue, Bob Shop Records is your home for blues, classic rock, jazz, and classical in vinyl for the past 35 years. Row Photo is your Rochester home for photo, home theater installation, audio, and accessory needs. For three generations since 1898, Row Photo is there for you with second to none customer service. Stop by Row Photo's two convenient locations today. Trusted by musicians, recording engineers, and consumers, SoundSource is the place to go for instruments, gear, consignment needs, repairs, and to have all your questions answered by knowledgeable and friendly staff. Visit them at 161 Norris Drive for all things audio today. Additional support for the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight comes from Three Heads Brewing and Joe Bean Coffee Roasters. Thanks so much for joining me today, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I would like to give a first an official congratulations. You are now engaged to your lovely fiance, Katie. Let's uh, give yeah. them a round of Thank applause. <laughs> So it's a beautiful thing <laughs> yes, in, this, is. Yeah. in this dire world we yes. live in yeah. that love it's, still grows. It, it, is, it is wonderful. And I've got a wonderful woman. Yeah. I say multi-talented a lot on this show. Uh, <laughs> it has never been more true than with you. I'm, I'm going to run down the list because th this is pretty insane. You're a lecturer and pro program coordinator at University of Rochester with three classes in the audio and musical engineering department while you're working on your PhD. You won a Grammy in 2011 for your recording of an organ album, Messiaen Leuve de Saint Sacrament. Where you were at, when you were at Juilliard, you know, because where else would you do that? You host a great podcast called Today, Today Then, which was nominated in City Newspaper's Best of Rochester poll. You've given a TED Talk. Shout out to Passive Aggressives Anonymous. They yes. performed on that one as well in yes. 2014. You have a Wikipedia page, Spotlight First. We've never had someone <laughs> with a Wikipedia page on before. You play drums and fuzz rod. You were on Saxon Shore. You have a home studio, calibrated recordings, and why you're here today. You released an album called Missed Connections, which features posts on Craigslist about missed connections in Rochester, which was also nominated in City Newspaper's poll for Best of Rochester. That's, uh, that's a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, uh, I don't know how I keep it all straight, but somehow, somehow I manage. You got it going on. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you are originally from Binghamton, yes? Yes, I can, grew up in Binghamton. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit how you started playing music? Oh yeah, of course. Um, six years old, I started playing piano, mm. uh, my first instrument. And I still wanted to play the drums. Uh, when I was a <laughs> kid, my parents used to say I used to lay in my crib and uh, they'd play music and I'd wave my arms in the air like this. Right, um, like so you they, just don't care. Yeah, they, they just kind of knew that I was going to be a drummer. Um, and then I started drum lessons the next year um, and everything was on a practice pad for the next seven years of my life. I didn't oh, have dear. a drum set until I was 14, so my parents really wanted to know that I was really dedicated to the drums. They didn't want to unleash the beast too early. No, no. I mean, gotcha. and you know, kudos to them for allowing me to have a drum set and band practices and everything in the basement of our of our home. Uh, boy, every all my guests this season are like giving me these perfect segues. Is that when you started playing in bands out and doing the rock band thing? As a oh drummer? yeah, that was uh, uh, middle school. You know, yeah. um, my first band was called Purge. Mm -hmm. We were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still have basement recordings. It was also the first band I ever recorded, like oh, if you want to put it that way, yeah. which was basically uh, a single Radio Shack microphone in the middle of a room. 
Wow. Uh, if yeah. it makes you feel any better, that's how the spotlight started, too. <laughs> well, that's so good, it, yeah. We all got to start that, someplace. That's good. Uh, so when did the formal education come in, or did you just go right into touring after high school? Um, no, high school, uh, I was in, I was at Binghamton High School, and Binghamton mm -hmm. High School has uh, the Rod Serling School of Fine Arts, which mm -hmm. is part of the uh, high school. And so there's a really great music and art program. My brother went through the art program. Mm. Um, and so then after that, well, I was, <laughs> while, I was, while I was in high school, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to go for music mm. or meteorology. Wow. And those were my two choices. And so I ended up going to Fredonia for sound right. recording and mm -hmm. music performance. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I uh, toured a whole bunch for about two years. Um, right. Went to 48 out of the 50 states. I can very even guess which two I haven't been to yet. Right. I, I um, think we can figure that yeah, out. Yeah. The ones that you can't do, get to very easily by van um, <laughs> without having to go through another country. Um, right. And then Japan a couple times and 13 countries in Europe. That's a lot. Yeah. How many bands did you do that with? That was with two different bands, really. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly, most of my touring days were with a band called League and then Saxon Shore. Can you tell us about your time with Saxon Shore? This is a Philly-based band, and you know you yep. still you brought some of their albums with you. I mean, it's a, it's a big part of what you do. Yeah, it's on the Wikipedia page. It is that you were with this band. Yep. So this this must have been a pretty cool thing for your, for you to be a part of drumming for them. Yeah, it was. Um, I was not the original drummer. Mm -hmm. um, they asked me to join after my band League broke up. They lost their original drummer. Uh, some of you may know him. His name is Josh Tillman. He now goes as Father John Misty. Um, ah. He was the original drummer of Saxon Shore. Mm -hmm. I replaced him um, and then stayed with the band for the next 10 years. And we're, even though we're not um, playing anymore, uh, we're all still really good friends. It's just one guy lives in L.A., one's in New York, right. two in Philly, and I'm up here. So, so it's like life took over. Right. You're still officially active, but yeah. it's just... just really the, slowed down. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We still trade files every so often, just like... Hey, let's work yeah. on something. But, well, that's nice. Yeah. So, can you tell us about your time after the Rage and Torn rock and roll days? You eventually got a job at Juilliard. I did. Um, so, I moved to New York City. Uh, I was unemployed for about three months, mm. uh, as everyone is when they moved to New York, and uh, did a lot of internships at studios mm -hmm. uh, and all that kind of stuff. I ended up getting a job at MTV, it was my first job mm. in New York. And so, I worked there uh, doing video editing for about six months. And then I got a job at Juilliard, and I was there the rest of the time I was at, in New York. And yeah. while I was at Juilliard, I was a recording engineer. Right, and you did some, you faked video as well. I remember yeah, I, I faked that. video very yeah. well. Uh, <laughs> I, I learned Final Cut. Us too. I learned Final Cut in one night, and then... Well, uh, I, we'll talk about the advice for artists later, but this is one that I made sure I want to pass along. He said, if someone asks you if you know a piece of software, yes. just say yes no matter what, yes. and learn it the night before. Yeah, I tell, I tell my That's students right. that all the time. Just yep. if you know... Just, if, if, if you don't know PowerPoint and, and uh, at the job interview tell, asks you, yeah. uh, just say, yes, I do, and <laughs> learn it in one night and show up your job the next day. That's right. Someday you were my waitress, but I couldn't keep my eyes off you. Uh, we do. I do want to just touch on the Grammy recording a little bit because you're you're on camera, and of course we yeah. want to ask about that. Hi everybody. Uh, so <laughs> can you just? Uh, this was an organ recording that you worked on uh, when Paul Jacobs, uh, who's the head organist, the organ right. professor at Juilliard, uh, he came to me and he was just like, "Hey, um, I have this record I want to do. Uh, would you be willing to help me out?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course. This would be great. Um, this is you know, uh, this is the scope of the project." He, we sat down. And he booked it at St. Mary's Cathedral mm. on, on 45th Street in New York City. So pretty much right near Times Square. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and it was four days of recording, uh, set up at 10 p.m., record till four in the morning. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, he had to avoid all the life noise. Yeah, exactly. We had to avoid all the daytime noise. Um, subways kind of calmed down, but mm. it's also the largest subway station in New York City. So you still have yeah. vibration from that. Um, there... Uh, so we did that for four nights in a row, set up teardown complete because they had masses during the day. <laughs> so we couldn't leave our microphones up. Oh, what a um, mess. So I had to mark the floor and everything yeah. and do everything uh, exactly perfectly or else it would have sound, it would sound different from night to night. Um, and then, so the four days of that, and then we edited for five months. Um, but it was basically because he was traveling a lot. He was right. touring. Okay. Um, it wasn't just like every day for right. five months. Right. You weren't like strapped into the computer yeah. editing. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was certainly worth the effort. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was definitely worth the effort. <laughs> uh, can you tell us about your move 
to Rochester. Yeah, I moved to Rochester in 2010 to start my master's at mm -hmm. University of Rochester in mm -hmm. their uh, uh, electrical engineering department mm -hmm. as a uh, specialization in music and acoustics. Right. And so I was kind of tired in New York City. I was tired mm -hmm. of living on top of people and uh, the, an hour commute on the subway each way. And mm -hmm. Just I, I did it. I did it for five years. Right. It was fine. Um, and I moved here. <laughs> I moved here to Rochester. Um, and I love it. I, I, yeah. I fell in love with this city. Um, oh. I, I realized it uh, at one point I went to New York City to visit mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. uh, it was right before Hurricane Sandy hit. Uh, and I remember getting on the plane to come home and just thinking to myself, I can't wait to go home. And it was the first time like I'd lived somewhere besides Binghamton where I was referred to it as a home. Right. Um, and so... And you started playing in bands around Rochester as well oh, yeah. around that time. Can you? I know there. I know there have been a lot, but if you could just give us the brief overview. Oh geez, uh, let's see. Um, Revenge in Ears, uh, Kitty Snow Pants, which was a Tim Avery thing uh, that lasted. I, I think we played two shows. Oh my god. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, Fuzz Rod, I'm in now. Right. Uh, what else was I in? Talking uh, underwater. Oh, talking underwater. Yes, I was. <laughs> thank you. They've, they've been on this show, right? They have. Yeah. Shout out Talking Shout Out Water. Yeah, they, they've been on the show. Uh, place to scene. Yes, thank you. <laughs> place to scene. And you in the back. I, I, I wasn't going to forget them. Um, I was going to say, you played here with them. <laughs> yeah, we played at Bob Shop with them on a record store day. I think that's about it. There's been like some other uh, uh, just hangouts sure. and whatever, yeah. a bunch of musicians. It's a, it's, I love the music scene here. Um, everyone is pretty friendly mm -hmm. they know each other they come out to support each other yeah. um it's a it's a good music scene to be a it's part a cool, of yeah i was gonna yeah. say it's a cool thing and one thing that i kind of like about your your time in rochester it's sort of uh, we've met a couple times before this we've had a chance to chat and how this album that has come out misconnections it's sort of everything is settling down a little bit life is moving in different directions and this is sort of the opportunity where you're like i'm going to challenge myself yeah. with something and not just and not just playing and, and doing stuff and this is one of the funniest CDs I've ever heard. Uh, you play all the instruments, you've, re you've recorded it yourself. Um, besides the challenge, what on earth inspired you to take a Missed Connections post on Craigslist and turn it into a song? Well, I fell in love with Missed Connections, like the concept of it, when I was in New York. Mm. Um, my roommate and I would read them at night and just be like, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with these people? Right. And then it's not like they're wrong with it, but like, go and talk to this person. Why are you right. posting about it later when you go online? And so, um, in New York, they were actually fairly innocent. Um, hmm. Most of them were pretty sweet. I saw you on the subway, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And when I moved to Rochester, I, my, my roommate, John, his name's John Keller uh, in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. he and I um, had an idea to do these kind of songs, um, but then I left uh, New York and I came to Rochester and I started looking at the misconnections here, and they're a lot... Um, <laughs> more cringeworthy yeah cringeworthy and weird um and i thought that they were kind of i i don't know why but i thought it, i thought this would make good music So yeah. um, when I was in Revenge uh, uh, a couple of the other guys in Revenge uh did this thing called Weekly Beats, hmm. which was a every a challenge to write a new song every single week. Hmm. And so I kind of was like, all right, well, I'll do that. And so that's what it was born out of. And I did right. that for about 11 weeks until life came over. Right. Uh, life took over and it was like, okay, I don't have time to write a song every week. Um, but then I just kept looking for the right posts mm -hmm. and it was kind of like a songwriting exercise. Right. It was, uh, I had the lyrical content. I didn't have to think about that, but how could I structure a song to fit the lyrics? How could I break up the lyrics so they make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then the soundscapes when I was recording, like right. how could I do a different genre? How could I convey a different feeling or emotion mm -hmm. based on what they're writing? So I'm really trying to evoke what the person may have been feeling right. at that time, whether it's playful or whether it's angry or whether it's just plain weird. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you for, for giving us that rundown. That was really yeah. cool. I wanted to um, talk about a couple quick things. Uh, 
you actually sort of mentioned this a couple times about life taking over and doing so many projects. Uh, I, I'm in this boat as well. I mean, it's my calendar is starting to look like a crazy person's. Like there's yeah. an arrow in the column that's pointing to another date because there's not enough room in that day. Yeah. Um, how do you keep sane doing all these projects? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> my wonderful fiance. She, <laughs> Good she, answer, she, man. She keeps me, <laughs> she keeps me pretty uh, grounded. Yeah. Um, but uh, also uh, this year I actually started doing a bullet journal, mm -hmm. um, which actually I look at it every night now. Right. Um, so that really kind of sets my goals and makes me realize, reflect on what I accomplished that day yeah. um, and what I have to do going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, calendar, um, <laughs> having uh, friends and bandmates that remind you that we have rehearsal tonight. My bandmates are here, <laughs> and they text me on Tuesdays and like, hey, are we rehearsing? I don't respond until like 6 o'clock and rehearsals at 6.30, so I, I'm sure that they get annoyed. Um, but that's, you know. Well, they're keeping you around, yeah, so they, 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 they check in. Uh, <laughs> just a little teaser. Now, you're, record, you're in some stage of recording a spiritual successor. Yes. To this album. Can, can you tell us briefly what you're thinking about uh, yeah. Small Signals Small, album part two? That, Small Signals part two. So I, I should say that like, I do have other music that right. isn't this. Um, <laughs> I do write serious songs as well. So if you go to my band camp, there are um, more serious sure. songs that I, I've written in the past and uh, continue to write. Um, but I wanted to do something else that I had an idea for. And it's to challenge me to write in a pop country uh, vein, which I've never done. I've never written like, uh, you know, <laughs> Sorry, I'm, trying. <laughs> that's, that's I'm trying to stick through it, man. I know, but I, I've, I've never yeah. written a song in that vein. Right. So I'm like, okay, what, what's the topic that I could do? And so instead of Craigslist and misconnections and even that thing, I'm going to write five songs about five trucks. And there's going to be five songs about five trucks. And so, you know, I'm going to do the Ford F-150 and the Dodge Ram and the Toyota Jesus. Tacoma. And I'm probably, uh, the way I'm thinking about it around, I'm structuring some of the lyrics. It's literally singing about, like, it has a V6 engine. <laughs> it has, you know, a sliding rear window. Uh, it can haul this much weight. Right. Um, no know. need to take the subtle approach. No, exactly. Right. Just five songs about five trucks and loving your truck. I, I do uh, have an affinity for pickup trucks, but, uh, you know. Right. You have to get in the right mindset yeah, for this. exactly. One. All right. Give him a round of applause. He got through most of the questions. <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a handful more for you. Uh, if you've seen the show before, you know yeah. that this is the lightning round. Oh, the lightning round. The lightning round, but take your time and answer. Right. doesn't have to be lightning. It can be a nice distant thunder. Okay. Uh, if you could accomplish one thing in music and be happy, what would it be? Oh, geez. I know it's a big one. That's a big one. Um, if I could accomplish one thing in music. Uh, oh, man. I know. That's leaving me speechless. Um, I think it's to, I can't even say that. Like, <laughs> it's, it's tough because I've been very fortunate mm. in my career to have been uh, this, you know, be able to tour, being able to live and make music and, and do that kind of stuff. So if I had one thing, I, I think it would just be to uh, keep that going, to mm. be able to, part, to partake in uh, teaching or leaving some sort of like guidance towards a younger generation. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm 36. Mm. Um, I can't really like hang with the hip crowd anymore. <laughs> I realize that. I still listen to the hip music, at least right. I try. Um, <laughs> but I'm not going to the bug jar every night. And I, I hope I encourage my students or a younger generation to take in music that they've never heard, yeah. to go support the local music scene. Mm -hmm. um, don't just go to the big Bruce Springsteen concert that came through. Right. You know, go. Uh, support and pay five bucks and go three, see three bands i, so I think that's the one thing i'd like to leave yeah i don't know it's a good uh, answer yeah it was good <laughs> uh you talked you touched on this a little bit uh what makes rochester such a great place for original music to live and breathe um uh affordability <laughs> okay I, think, I, I, I haven't I, gotten I, that one before but yeah, it's true i think i think it, it's um it's a good place for where you can work a good job and right. get paid, paid pretty well but you don't have this hour commute um, mm -hmm. that you would in Brooklyn or Chicago or New York. Um, so you have more time to devote to your craft and devote right. to your art. Uh, you have more, uh, you, can, you can spend more on pedals and guitars and things because you're not paying for exorbitant amounts when you go out for a night of drinking. So right. it's, it's just, I, I think that's one thing Rochester really has to offer mm -hmm. musicians and artists in general. 
Uh, we talked about calendars. We talked about bullet lists. We've talked about a number of things you can pass along, but this is this is the big one. Yeah. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Oof. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I do. What? <laughs> Learn. Oh yeah, actually, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My lovely fiance chimed in. Yes. Thank you, Katie. Um, yeah, uh, that's actually a really good because we, her and I have talked about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Is that music and art isn't just about music and art. Mm. It's a business. Yeah. And the further the the sooner you come to that realization that you have to know how to read a contract and to um, operate as a business person and make money. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about like, I'm creating this art and putting it out there and it's going mm -hmm. to come to me, the better off you'll be because otherwise people will take advantage of you or uh, you'll just be kind of left to the wind. Yeah. Uh, Steven, thanks yeah. so much for your time, man. Thank really you, appreciate it. Yeah. I'm Dan Gross. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight. Ladies and gentlemen, Steven Rossner. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by Bob Shop Records, Bernunzio Uptown Music, Row Photo, and sound source. Bernunzio Uptown Music, located in Rochester's East End, has been providing Rochester and the world with quality used string instruments since 1976. Bernunzio also offers concerts, workshops, and jam sessions. This season, we're in this warm local and creative space, Bob Shop Records. Located right outside the city at 1460 Munner Avenue, Bob Shop Records is your home for blues, classic rock, jazz, and classical in vinyl for the past 35 years. Row Photo is your Rochester home for photo, home theater installation, audio, and accessory needs. For three generations since 1898, Row Photo is there for you with second to none customer service. Stop by Row Photo's two convenient locations today. Trusted by musicians, recording engineers, and consumers, SoundSource is the place to go for instruments, gear, consignment needs, repairs, and to have all your questions answered by knowledgeable and friendly staff. Visit them at 161 Norris Drive for all things audio today. Additional support for the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight comes from Three Heads Brewing and Joe Bean Coffee Roasters. Ladies and gentlemen, Small Signals! <laughs> It was
Save it if I put more than four gigs. It won't even let me save. Thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> All right. So there's going to be pauses every once in a while where I reload and reset up PowerPoint, which is terrible. Um, but I think it also lends itself to this genre very well. We're just supposed like, to learn what PowerPoint up? overnight. Yeah, you're supposed yeah. to learn one night. You learned right yeah. last night. Uh, you're supposed to learn everything, uh, memorize it. I'm gonna retune here real quick. Shouldn't take long. You guys can edit this out. Meh. Meh. Yeah. yeah. I saw you tuning one night at Pop Shop. <laughs> yeah. That's sick. <laughs> I wanted to go up to you and say something, but I didn't have the courage. I still haven't, I still haven't found one about me doing this, so I'm waiting. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
speak to you, don't they? Um, it's, <laughs> it's, oh my God. It's, it's supposed to be a little ridiculous and over the top. Take off the guitar for a second. I got some slack on this. I'm gonna take a sip of Jenny Rochester's beer. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I know it's a long shot However you and I were smiling At one another While we had dinner I know it's a long shot However you and I were smiling At one another While we had dinner At the G Asterisk 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 H Asterisk 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 At the G Asterisk 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 H Asterisk 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 Last night Thursday I thought you were on a date Or I would have asked you out myself I did not want to be rude Tell me what I did when I left and let's me Let's me Oh, so Guess what? Time to change PowerPoints. Woo! <laughs> this is gonna be the longest spotlight episode ever. <laughs> With the shortest songs. <laughs> Not while it's opening. Tune up. Alright, so this next one took place on University Avenue. At the price rate. Everybody ready? Yeah. This episode was mixed by owner and operator of Wicked Squid Studios, Josh Pettinger. Please visit their website to find out how you can become a member of their studio today. This episode is brought to you by Bob Shop Records, Bernunzio Uptown Music, Row Photo, and Sound Source. Bernunzio Uptown Music, located in Rochester's East End, 
has been providing Rochester and the world with quality used string instruments since 1976. Bernunzio also offers concerts, workshops, and jam sessions. This season, we're in this warm, local, and creative space, Bob Shop Records. Located right outside the city at 1460 Monroe Avenue, Bob Shop Records is your home for blues, classic rock, jazz, and classical in vinyl for the past 35 years. Row Photo is your Rochester home for photo, home theater installation, audio, and accessory needs. For three generations since 1898, Row Photo is there for you with second to none customer service. Stop by Row Photo's two convenient locations today. Trusted by musicians, recording engineers, and consumers, SoundSource is the place to go for instruments, gear, consignment needs, repairs, and to have all your questions answered by knowledgeable and friendly staff. Visit them at 161 Norris Drive for all things audio today. Additional support for the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight comes from Three Heads Brewing and Joe Bean Coffee Roasters. Uh, I need to get my guitar intonated, if you can't tell. But shouldn't have to tune this much. I've got one, two, three, four, five more songs left, but they're all about a minute long. Um, so this one took place. Uh, losing my voice. This one took place uh, at the other big park in Rochester, uh, Highland uh, Park. So. Connections and just read them. Yeah, just read them all. They're brilliant. Um, th this is only, so I'm doing 12 songs a night. There's still five more that are on the record. Um, so it was kind of uh, born out of the idea of I wanted to try to do like the 69 Love songs, um, but no, that the, the, the Magnetic Fields did, but 69 of these would have been overkill, I think. Um, <laughs> Casual encounters. <laughs> <laughs> Those actually, honestly, are less creepy, I think. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I think casual encounters are less creepy than misconnections. I've been trolling it for months. Yeah. Whoops. Um, I gotta get my pedal on. Okay. 
so I can make eye contact, yeah. uh, weirdly. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to tune real quick. Any questions before I go into the next song? Is it going to be as subtle as that last one? <laughs> um, uh, no. <laughs> the next one is pretty, pretty not subtle. <laughs> Has anyone ever heard you play and then just realized that it was about them? No, well, no one's told me. So, it, someone, it may have been about them, but they might have just ran in shame uh, somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, no one's come up to me and be like, that's about me. Nobody's asked for royalties? No, and no one's asked for royalties. No one's been like, I wrote that. So, that's, you know, that's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> We are rolling. We are good. Two more songs. And then you can all go out and enjoy your Friday night.
Dan and Rochester Spotlight. Spotlight. Thank you to Bob Shop for hosting this. Uh, buy some records. I just bought two records here last week. Uh, a fantastic low record uh, called Drums and Guns. If you're, not, if you're fans of low, you should check them out. Um, if you're not fans of low, you should check them out too. Uh, all right, this is it. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. Steve. 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 <laughs> Hi, I am looking for a guy that was at Pelican's Nest. You wear leaving on your heart. I looked at you and said, Thumb. If you're not married or have a GF, I think you're so handsome. It was earlier in the afternoon. Do you remember what you said to me? And tell me what colored button down shirt, button down shirt, button down shirt you had on. Oh. You were clean, but I had a black tank on with a white sweater. Thank you all. Thanks again to Bob Shop, to Dan, and Rochester. Thank you, Spotlight. Yeah, I hope this. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I did. I had a lot of fun. Way to commit. Way to commit. Uh, buy my stuff if you want. There are free records. Uh, the Saxon Shore CDs. Um, just take one.